welcome back everyone, it's Matsmus, and thank you so much for joining me on this video today. We are talking today about heavy lift helicopters, and the one that is in question today is the CH-53 Super Stallion Heavy Lift Helicopter. Now, I was blessed to actually see this helicopter and experience it in Afghanistan, both flying on it and actually seeing it fly over me and land around me and do whatever it needs to do in its day-to-day -day business. It is an overpowering beast, and I love it. Um, it actually dropped off supplies to me in Afghanistan at FOB Edinburgh. Uh, we actually had some of our power pack engines dropped off, not only by uh, CH-47 Chinooks, but also by the beautiful CH-53 Super Stallion. So, it is one of those aircraft that you look at and think, oh my goodness, that is a big, big helicopter. And it is, it's a beast. Uh, unfortunately, it has had a rocky, rocky side to its uh, history with both accidents and procurement into its service. It is, fortunately enough, being brought into a new era of its uh, life, being given a overhaul into the CH-53K variation, but uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's go over its specifications, its history, how it came to be and what it's about, and then I'll put my own take on it, and then we'll go from there. So, the Sikorsky CH-53 Super Stallion is a heavy lift helicopter and first flew in 1974 and entered service with the United States Marine Corps in 1981. A total of 172 Super Stallions have been delivered and the 165 that are in service are with the Marine Corps squadrons in the Pacific Fleet and in the Atlantic Fleet. The helicopter is also in service with the Marine Corps Reserves, Training Units and Experimental Squadrons. The final Super Stallion of the United States Marine Corps was delivered in November 2003. The Marine Corps uses the Super Stallion in an amphibious assault role for transporting heavy equipment. However, nowadays the US Marine Corps pretty much use it for most things, including delivery of some of the most amazing bits of kit and some of the heavyweight contenders that they can pick up are just insane. The US Navy also uses the Super Stallion for vertical delivery and recovery of damaged aircraft on aircraft carriers. As you can see with these gentlemen here picking up these strikers, labs and all that good stuff, it's just one of those helicopters that can just about lift anything that uh, the US Army needs to deliver, obviously not an Abrams or whatever else. Uh, we actually had them drop off a couple of uh, Humvees out in Afghanistan on the Fob Edinburgh location there. It was pretty impressive to see them just dropping uh, those vehicles off and shooting back off again. Of course, the Shinnok can do the same thing, but when you look at this helicopter and it, the overpowering size of it, considering it's just a single rotor aircraft, it really does set you back a little bit. In 2000, the US Marine Corps announced that the CH-53X program was going to be brought in to upgrade the CH-53E and extend its service life to 2025. Upgrades would include a new engine, substantially increased payload capacity, an all-composite rotor, and a glass cockpit with fly-by-wire controls. In March 2004, a US Marine Corps analysis of alternatives determined that the new build airframe would be more cost-effective as a solution. Sikorsky was awarded an initial design system development contract and demonstration contract for the new helicopter, which was designated the CH-53K Heavy Lift Rotocraft, and in January 2006 with full STD contract in April 2006. The G38 1B engine was selected to power the CH-53K in December 2006, and requirement is for 156 helicopters and to be entering service hopefully as soon as possible, which unfortunately are still being delayed to this day. But let's take a quick look at a nice little promotional video from Sikorsky about this aircraft and uh, it teaches us a few of the features that's going to be upgraded to allow this aircraft to continue serving the United States Marine Corps and its beloved Corps because they do go hand in hand for the many, many uh, years to come. Let's have a look. Together with the United States Marine Corps, Sikorsky has pioneered the heavy lift segment for rotary aircraft. Beginning with the recovery of downed air vehicles and the transport of heavy weapons, the 53 mission set has since evolved to include non-combat evacuation, maritime interdiction, and gas and oil platform operations among many others, driving an entirely new and expanded set of dramatically increased aircraft requirements. A totally new design. The Sikorsky CH-53K meets or exceeds all of the Marine Corps' heavy lift replacement requirements. 
digital fly-by-wire avionics with fully integrated flight and navigation displays, net-centric and tactical data link integration, correlation, and fusion. Three General Electric GE 38-1B 7500 shaft horsepower engines, tripling the hot day lift capability versus current heavy lift aircraft at 110 nautical miles. Advanced rotor drive system, including split torque transmission, elastomeric main rotor head, and next generation composite main rotors, advanced directional infrared countermeasures, and three GAU 21 50 caliber machine guns, and redesigned composite airframe significantly increase aircraft and crew survivability. The use of advanced composites and fully integrated digital health and usage monitoring systems increases operational readiness, dramatically reducing direct maintenance and decreasing the per aircraft cost of ownership. Fully marinized with a large capacity L pallet ready internal cargo bay and independent triple hook external cargo handling system, the CH-53K has a max gross weight of 88,000 pounds and supports the full range of current and emerging Marine Corps mission requirements. Passing 10,000 feet, masking up. Three minutes out. LZR coming up at 10 o'clock. Roger. Got it. Only five, sir. Looking good, sir. Ramp clear. On the go. CH-53K delivers significantly increased performance and capability across five key areas. Multi-mission flexibility, state-of-the-art avionics, increased lift, and increased survivability with decreased cost for fuel and maintenance. The Sikorsky CH-53K heavy lift helicopter is the Marine Corps' choice for the 21st century. So a really interesting video there, nice to see it showcasing some of the features of a modern day aircraft. So let's go over this aircraft's specifications a little bit and its features. The fuselage is a watertight system and is light alloy steel and titanium construction. The cockpit includes glass fibre and epoxy materials to make it as strong as humanly possible to potentially hold it from crash landings and ground fire. The seven bladed main rotor is fitted with Sikorsky's blade inspection system. The main rotor blades are of Nomex honeycomb construction with a titanium spar and composite glass fiber epoxy skin, making it extremely strong. The rotor head is primarily titanium and steel for the exact same purpose. The CH-53E accommodates three crew. The helicopter is accommodated with a Hamilton Sunstrand Automatic Flight Control System or AFCS with two digital flight control computers, a full axis autopilot an altitude and heading reference system, and a Rockwell Collins GPS 3A global positioning system from Northrop Grumman. There's also the ANAP 217 Doppler radar to potentially gather targets and threats around the area. 
The AHRS has been replaced with a new system from BAE Systems. Of course, all the fancy technology that goes onto this aircraft really don't deter from the fact that this aircraft's primary purpose was to carry troops onto the ground as quickly as possible, specifically Marines. The cabin is fitted with folding canvas seats along the sides in normal configuration to seat 37 Marines, but additional center rows allow accommodation of a total of around 55 troops. Martin Baker, with headquarters in Uxbridge in the UK, has been awarded a $20 million contract to supply new crashworthy seats to allow 31 of the seats to be helicopter crash proof. The cabin is equipped with a hydraulically operated rear ramp for loading freight and the troops. The cabin can hold up to seven standard 1.2 or 1.1 pallets and allowing the helicopter to carry a maximum internal load of around 14,515 kilograms. That is a huge payload guys for a helicopter. An external load lift system developed by Skyhook Technologies allows the helicopter to carry separate underslung loads that can be carried simultaneously and delivered separately to different drop locations. This is fantastic because it allows for not just one drop, but two, not having to split the line and pick up something else. The Super Stallion can carry a maximum external payload of 16,330 kilograms. Once again, guys, an absolutely massive payload for a helicopter to pick up. The Super Stallion is equipped with an ATK AN ARR 47 missile warning system and chaff and flare dispensers. This is key for areas just like Afghanistan and Iraq, where, you know, air to air missiles are not a threat, but ground to air are extremely, extremely dangerous to these aircraft. An initial six CH 53 helicopters of the German armed forces are fitted with EADS AN ARR 60 MILDS missile warning systems and also fitted on the NH 90 Tiger helicopters. In June 2007, Northrop Grumman was awarded a contract to equip the US Marine Corps CH-53E helicopters with a directional infrared countermeasure system, again known as the DIRCM. Now in terms of power guys, these things are juiced to the max. The CH-53E helicopters are powered by three General Electric turbofan engines, the type T64GE416 rated at 3266 kilowatts. The engine cowlings and transmission fairings are of Kevlar construction for obvious reasons for ground fire potentially taking them out. Speaking of ground protection, helicopters don't like to explode in a huge ball of flames. So there are self-sealing bladders that allow the fuel tanks to carry up to 1,192 liters of capacity that are installed in the forward sections of the sponsons. An internal two cell fuel tank provides 1,465 liters of fuel and it needs it. This thing will sup up that fuel very, very quickly with those power plants. Drop tanks with a total capacity of 4,921 liters can also be installed externally to each sponson. For extended range operations, the helicopter can be fitted with seven additional tanks providing an additional 7,949 liters of fuel. Remember guys, Marines are using these primarily and Marines tend to come off boats. Therefore, these aircraft need sometimes long distances to cover before they can drop off the troops onto the shoreline or wherever they need to be. Most of these aircraft are obviously going to be coming from ships when they're deployed or sometimes they're going to come from air bases too, but they need that operational range. The Super Stallions can extend its range even further by in-flight refueling, which is key to this aircraft and very, very important to the US Marine Corps. The helicopter is fitted with a forward extendable in-flight refueling probe and can actually hoist a hose from refuel with a surface shift whilst in hover mode. That is incredible guys and allows this aircraft to keep going further and further if necessary. Honestly guys, the fact that this aircraft can refuel midair is just fantastic to me uh, and it really does make a huge capability for the US Marine Corps and the US Navy too to allow these aircraft uh, to go well beyond their normal operational ranges with the fuel that they do have on board. The armaments for this aircraft are rather interesting. The only original armament on the CH-53E was two 50 caliber machine guns mounted on the windows of the sides of the helicopter. These could only cover from the front and most of the sides, leaving the rear exposed. A ramp mounted weapon system, or the RMWS, has been developed and evaluated by the US Marine Corps. The M3M RMWS is a GAU-21 50 caliber reduced recoil machine gun soft mounted on the ramp which can be removed and installed in less than two minutes. The M3M has a rate of fire of around 1,100 rounds a minute. By January 2011, the US Navy helicopters were fitted with three GAL-21s or XM-28s 50 caliber machine guns. These machine guns are beasts. And to be honest with you, the rate of fire that these guns can put down is very impressive. I've got to admit that these things 
overhead were just very dominating, um, and I'm sure the Marine Corps loved having them on their side with 350 calibers, giving them a bit of cover. Uh, of course, the Black Hawks have their mini guns and all that sort of stuff, but you know, nothing beats a bit of a 50 cal round flying overhead to protect you. Um, so good for the Marine Corps for putting on some of the big guns on these boys. The aircraft also has retractable tricycle type landing gears consisting of three twin wheeled units. The main units retract into the rear sponsons, and they need to to give it that basically aerodynamic feel to allow it to fly through the sky a lot more efficiently and effectively. Those landing gear are very heavy duty guys and they're probably just as much as an airliner almost because of the fact that they really do need to hold a lot of weight when it comes down on the floor. So that's it guys, the MH-53 and what a beast it is. Um, of course there are a couple of other variants too including the Sea Dragon. Uh, it was primarily dedicated to the airborne mine countermeasures operations that were in service to the US Navy in 1986. There's around 40 of them delivered uh, and the MH-53E is actually a little heavier than the CH-53E uh, with an enlarged fuel sponsor for great fuel capacity again being in the Navy. Uh, being allowed to go long ranges to other ships it was needed and it also required a bit more bigger engines uh, it was given t64 ge 419 engines at the end of the day though we know that its true purpose is to provide those marines a safe passage to where they need to be and back out again and that's a lot of troops to carry into a battlefield and the potential to bring in their vehicles and equipment with it i know fine well that the marine corps have a lot of respect for this aircraft hence why they've chosen to keep it going with the ch53k uh, good for them, I hope it continues its service long into the future. Uh, for those of you who have served in the US Marine Corps with this aircraft, first of all, thank you for your service. But also, I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments section of what you actually felt about this aircraft. Were you ever nervous? Did you hear all the stories of the crashes and stuff? Did you feel like it wasn't something that you were safe being a part of and being flown into? I'd love to know your opinion on it. Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'd really appreciate it if you could leave me a comment and a like if you did enjoy it. And if you want to support my channel, please go check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description box below. YouTube has been kicking my ass for demonetization, as I'm sure you're aware of most channels nowadays it's happening. And of course, I don't do this for the money, but it is nice um, with the amount of effort that I do put in to have a little support from, from my followers. And if you wish to, I'd really appreciate that. Thanks again for joining me, everyone. And let's say goodbye to this absolutely fantastic aircraft. All the best. Bye-bye.